Welcome back to Switch to Linux. And today we are talking about software again, and we are going to revisit GNU Cache. We're going to do this for a couple of reasons. The first is I was over at a friend's house who is a little bit concerned with uh, all of the government surveillance in the world, and they have a fairly successful new business that's getting too big for them to manage the accounting and the books on spreadsheets and things like they have been doing. And so... Uh, they've been looking into QuickBooks and like, oh, I don't want to pay this cost and all the crap in the cloud and all this. The fact of the matter is GNU Cash is excellent and it has been getting better over the years. Now, a while back I did a tutorial series on GNU Cash and these are in here. Today I added the KMyMoney versus GNU Cash. If you're looking for simple personal accounting, KMyMoney is probably a little bit better. GNU Cash can manage that, but it is a little bit more complicated. It is for business taxes. And so it'd be worth looking into um, KMyMoney for personal stuff. But if you are in business, GNU Cash is a very good alternative to QuickBooks, being as that QuickBooks is trying to force everybody online. They're trying to do a software as a service solution. So you're paying them, you know, probably an annual fee. I think it's like 300 bucks a year right now. Not horrible, but still $300 every single year to give your company, all of your company's data to some other giant cloud company who is currently involved in an FTC lawsuit about abusing their power, that being Intuit, which is the owner of QuickBooks. And so we don't really want to support QuickBooks. Now, I have two business entities as I film this video. One of those is my web development company, which has been running for, I don't know, 12 years or something now. And I started that on QuickBooks, and that is the last application I am doing on Windows. Everything else in my life has been completely switched over to Linux. But when it came down to software uh, or to accounting, I always boot up that old Windows computer, do my invoices and my accounting. And I had an old version from, again, 12 years ago that wasn't connected to the cloud that eventually they want to kill and all that kind of stuff. It's that old vestige of software that they just can't let die yet um, because there's too much pushback, but it's going to go away eventually. So as I started my content creation business attached to my publishing group and switched to Linux here, all of that business for, I think I've been doing this for four or five years now, has been managed on GNU Cash. So I have been... Uh, concurrently running GNU Cache and QuickBooks. Now this year I have been migrating all of my data from QuickBooks over to GNU Cache to completely get rid of Windows. So for those looking to switch to Linux, hey, this is switched to Linux five years in, this is the year that I finally dump Windows for the last application. That is how your switch to Linux should be. It should not be quick. It should not be fast. It should not be rapid. It should be a slow process to make sure every meticulous detail is in place. And as I look back over the years, I see so many amazing things, but we're getting off topic. We want to talk about GNU Cache today. The reason I want to do this video is as I have been migrating over, the version of GNU Cache I'm using for my uh, publishing group is a much older version uh, just because that system, it's uh, generally an offline type system. I don't push updates a lot because I just don't want anything to break. But the newer one has been based on a newer system because that one is designed specifically for the web design company and it has a newer version of GNU Cache. The newer version of GNU Cache fixes a lot of the challenges that I've had in the past making it a little bit less of a clunky solution. And so today we are going to go ahead and have a look at that. Before we dive in, you can go online and uh, just do a search for documentation on GNU Cache. It will give you all of the different things uh, that you have. Uh, there is a PDF copy available here. So this is a 317 page PDF here if you want to get that. But it'd be worth printing out if you're using it because it goes into fine detail about all of the advanced features in, inside of it. And so you can do that. There is, of course, for you web-based folks, you can actually come over here. There is a help manual and a tutorial uh, guide, which is all just URLs with images and things like that. So this works pretty well. So no matter which option you would like to do, 
uh, you have good uh, good options to choose from. But what we're going to do today is uh, I went ahead and installed GNU Cache on my new Arch system that we built in the virtual machine. And we're going to look at a few of the changes and just kind of give you another brief overview of how the system works. So I just went in here, I gave it some basic sample data. And um, once we did that, then uh, we can just go ahead and show you a little bit about the system. So let's go ahead and head on over to that operating system. This is Arch Budgie. If you missed that particular video, that's fairly irrelevant. I just wanted to do Arch with this because I would get the latest version available. So we first log in here. You'll see that we have uh, some invoices that are due. Ah, two customer invoices are due this low life. Um, this is going to be a pop-up you have if you have invoices that are due that have not yet been paid. Cool. We also still have our tip of the day, so we can uh, walk through these different tips. Uh, this will tell you if you're using Quicken, MS Money, uh, QAF, OFX files, you can import them. There's not a way as of yet to directly import your QuickBooks files, but you can do workarounds involving converting your QuickBooks to QIF or OFX files and then importing those. Um, I didn't, didn't ever cover those. Um, I don't know. Maybe I might investigate it as I look to um, import stuff from my old, old instance. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and close that. So we're going to land over here on our main window. And this the, the default window just pulls up the individual accounts. You can see our current assets, our accounts receivables. Um, you can see our expenses. Our expenses have been split up into cleaning supplies and web hosting. So I basically put information in here. Now, what are some of the, the changes? Well, they have interlinked a lot of data, which saves a ton of time. So now if you go to the customer overview and you double click on an individual name, for example, you get a nice linkable list of all of the invoices and all of the payments. You can click on these links and see where the payments are. So these are in the payments receivables. Uh, here is where, um, the receivables are there. You can click in to see what the invoice is. So this is a game changer. When I first was using GNU Cash, I dealt with the fact that things weren't hot linked. It was a little bit harder to find things. Um, but the fact is, is that they have this so well put together now that you can actually go in here and do a lot of these things with hot linking options. The other place I like to go to, it's the customer summary because this will give me the input information here. It gives me the customer names, um, tells me the profits, markup, sales, expenses. So if you want to tie a specific expense to a specific customer, you can do that. I generally don't do that in my businesses, um, but you do actually have the option now to work with jobs and uh, so Joe for instance um, all of the uh, all of the things that Joe has been done has been tied to an individual job so we can tie things down so if I look for individual jobs now here's one of the downsides of this if you make a mistake um, without editing your um, without editing your XML file directly, you still can't do things like delete jobs or, or stuff like that. So I accidentally selected Bob Smith as the company for the first time I created the job. That wasn't right. There's no way to change it. There's, I mean, I could go into the XML file and, and manually delete it. We're in approaching danger zone to do that. So that's, this is not a perfect solution yet, but QuickBooks itself was a little bit wonky in some of those respects. But here we can pull up what the uh, job is. We can give it specific rates. When you create the jobs, you can do, uh, and customers. In fact, you can do specific discounts. So if a customer is nonprofit, when you set them up, you can specify a discount if you offer nonprofit discounts, things like that. You have all of those options to make it easier later to import your data. So as far as the um, the other things we've looked at in the past, uh, saved configurations, you can still go in here and create nice 
um, I, I just call this the uh, company overview, which is what uh, QuickBooks calls it, which gives us all the information. And I went ahead and gave this thing the, the basic type of information that the default company overview gives us in QuickBooks. Over here, I have a list of how many customers owe me how much money. So if they owe me money, they're in this list. If they don't owe me money, they're not. So I can quickly see who still has outstanding debts. Here's our cash flow bar chart, which we can edit these. So the money, uh, the money in, the money out is our expenses, and the green is our net profit. For mine, I per personally take the net flow off, but I wanted to go ahead and keep it on. Income over time, so this will uh, keep a log of each individual month, how much money came in for each individual service. So I set this up as a cleaning service, uh, some generic sales, and web design. So you can see here that what we did is I set these guys up. Now this one here, other income, this should have actually been listed under like a cleaning service, but um, I didn't actually set that up right the first time. But you can see as we hover over this, you can get a chance to see what each of these are. And you can put this in as a pie chart as well. So you can kind of see a pie chart how your individual setup is. Here's our cash flow, which this is going to tell us basically our, our summarized P&L. So I can see at the end of each year um, how much money uh, is my total profit. So here's the money in, here's the money out, here's our total profit. Of course, the default for these reports is for the whole year. Um, January to December uh, is the default on those. So that is uh, one of the... Uh, things you can change under the edit options. So if you hit edit options, I can set it in by quarters, by month, things like that. So there's other options we can do. We have the expense over time. This will give us the breakdown of where our expenses are coming in. So I put in here the web hosting is one expense and cleaning supplies is the other. So these are um, nice chart we can see. And then the account summary gives us the balance of all the different accounts I've selected. Now, the default for this report gives you like everything, so it's huge. But I like the account summary just to tell me how much money is uh, outstanding. So hopefully this number equals this number. And then what is the balance inside of each of the accounts? Now, of course, this report is, uh, is able to be edited. You can give it how many columns you like over here. Uh, you can do some adjustments with spreadsheets. I did cover some of this in the tutorials on the playlist. Uh, particularly, we edited the style sheets to do good, uh, good um, printable invoices. Uh, that's one of the things that I have a specific video on. But these are all the different things you can put inside of this. So um, let's see if I can find the uh, expense pie chart, for example. We'll move it down to the bottom. Push OK. And now at the very bottom, we'll have an expense pie chart. What we might want to do is edit the display. Let's go ahead and give it a height of 400 pixels. Push OK, and that'll make it a little bit bigger so we can see it better. So now you can see the breakdown of your expenses as a pie chart. You can do the same thing with the income as well. Um, so let's go ahead and see if I can find that report as well. So there is the income pie chart. We can do income and expense line chart, bar chart. Um, and here is the, put it right next to this one actually, yeah, income and then expense. So we'll do that. And then of course, go ahead and adjust these. So the idea here is you can set up your report to show exactly the information that you'd like to see. So now this is my total annual breakdown. Here's car cleaning of $1,000. Here's um, uh, generic sales on $1,500. Here is web design at $2,400. And here is other income. So that's what you can do. Now anytime you make a change to this report, Let's go ahead and hit the Save Configuration button. If it's the first time you're creating it, you can hit Save Configuration As, and this is going to give us the ability to save it as something else. Now, the downside on this report here, um, and I'm trying to resolve this in the spreadsheets. I've not had time. But one of the things I notice is that this receivable aging, which I absolutely want to use, messes up the column width. So it should be three equally spaced columns, but you'll see my income over time is getting squished down here at the bottom. Um, 
That seems to be because these text-based reports seem to take a lot of room. I've actually solved this on my main production build by having three text-based lines, and I put the three text-based lines in the same row. That actually seemed to balance it out. For the purpose of this report here, I just wanted to show you what you can do. And you can move things around, um, which, which will work. So this is how far along GNU Cache is coming. Um, it is absolutely viable for everything that you're doing. Uh, other things that um, just if this is your first time seeing GNU Cache, you can do online banking stuff. I personally don't want my accounting software to be doing anything with my bank without me interfering. So I have never used this type of stuff. Here's a price database. Um, this is actually I was looking to see if this was in here and apparently... I'm just trying to see if this was the um, thing we can do. Let's see. No, I think this is just going to be for currency exchanges. The one thing that is still missing, a lot of people have been still been asking for, is a list of individual products. So if you have a uh, basically a product list or a price list, that's something that as I as far as I know still does not do. Although it is something that um, people are probably looking into just because. Um, there have been a number of people asking for such a thing. So um, the fix of, for that, of course, though, is that uh, while that would be a, a nice feature, you can actually go in and um, as long as you know what you're doing, you can do, uh, it'll autofill stuff if you just fill things up and it autofills with the last time it was used. So if you do have standard things, it's sort of a workaround to just in the autofill option. So as soon as you match the description, it will automatically fill in the account, the quantity, and the unit price. This actually works really well for me in my book sales because I have a standard format of what the name of the book is. So I give it the name of the book and it will automatically fill in everything else, uh, even different sources. So I'll say like uh, a copy of Synaptergy uh, from Amazon and it will automatically fill in the account and the unit price for the the royalty amount I receive at Amazon, which is different from if I sell a book through Barnes & Noble. So the uh, the auto fill-in option, it does work well. Um, it is now easier to post and pay directly from this field. These might have been options that have been up there before. I've never highlighted them. But once you have your bill posted, you can go ahead and post it and pay it from the same thing. You can see this is all this other guy's stuff here. Let's just give it a random number and push OK. And now if we go back to our company overview, actually, let's do our customer overview, look at our first customer. And now we can see that um, he still owes me $800, but we can see that the new payment was just processed here today. It came out of the, the debit column. And here is the invoice for reference. So they are really coming along with GNU Cash. Uh, these are uh, just major positive changes in the direction the software is moving. And this is good enough that this is the year that I finally do completely drop the last vestiges that I've been using of mainstream crap operating systems and switching 100% to Linux. And we're going to be talking more about that probably later on this week. But anyway, um, I will have the, uh, if you're on YouTube, of course, you can see the YouTube playlist. I do have my videos cross post over on Library, BitChute, and on Rumble. You can find them over there. Um, they unfortunately don't have a good way to do playlists on any of those. So if you do want to catch them all, you can um, search up the titles if you want on the alternative platforms. They should all be there with the exception of, I'm not sure if they're all going to be on BitChute or not. Rumble, I'm not sure if everything got cross-posted either. Uh, library, everything is cross-posted uh, from the YouTube channel. So you can head on over to there if you'd like to uh, see the rest of these. Or just look at the playlist on YouTube and that will work. So with that, thanks for watching everybody. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching 
to Linux.